Hi, this is James from Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to look at an expansion to one of my favorite games ever created, and that's Ankh, Gods of Egypt. This is the Pharaoh expansion. This is going to be the idea that in ancient times, the Pharaoh was the intermediate for all the gods. So he was the conduit that the gods used to push their divine will onto Egypt. Now, that's going to be about the same idea with this expansion. What you're going to have is you're going to have a new board and you're going to try to push the favor of the Pharaoh to gain different benefits throughout the board. So let's go ahead down to the table here. I'll give you a general overview of how this expansion works and then we'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. Hi, this is James from Tabletop Gaming Guild and today we're going to take a look at what comes with and how it changes the game for Pharaoh, an expansion for Ankh, Gods of Egypt. So this game comes in a pretty large expansion box, and these actually match the dimensions for the rest of the game, so they stack really nicely, but uh, there's the height. And you're gonna get your rule book, this throne room, we'll put out here, and three priests for each of the gods that come with the base game and the Pantheon expansion. And you'll also get a pharaoh. Now this pharaoh will actually go on the map itself, but I'll explain the pharaoh in a second. And you will get actually, instead of these guys, you're going to get, because you'll have to get the uh, Tomb of Wonders from the Kickstarter to get these guys. You'll actually get these. So these little tokens for the Pharaohs. And you'll also get, whoops, new cards here that explain the rules for each uh, person playing. So five, um, summer sheets. You will also get one for each of the major uh, pharaohs in Egypt that are represented in this game. So you get five of these guys. And you'll get a deck of pharaoh cards. All right, I'm going to clean this up a little bit and we're going to go over how this adds to the game of Ankh, Gods of Egypt. Okay, so this is what a basic setup of the expansion will look like for uh, Pharaoh. Now, you're going to give three of these priests to each player, matching their color, and two of them are gonna go into their pool, and one of them is going to be placed in the Chamber of Law. So each player will have three, with one starting in the Chamber of Law. You also shuffle these up and pick one random, or Players can pick one that are their favorite. Uh, once you pick one, put the other ones back. And for example, like this one here, Amatep, it says place uh, Pharaoh. The last player places the Amatep adjacent to one of their monuments. So this is going to be the placement for this guy. And then he has effects. So in the region that he's in, Beloved, the Devotion reward for dominating or winning a battle and winning each monument majority in Imhotep's region is increased by one. So that's a nice benefit. And there's a region you're probably going to fight over with the Pharaoh in it. And then this one has the Sphinx's Riddle. Uh, reveal the political cards from the top of the deck equal to the number of Sphinxes you control. Pick one of them and discard the rest. We'll go over here this uh, Pharaoh deck here in a second. But... Like I said, you ha get this really cool um, summary sheet for the game. And this one basically just tells you all, all the rules. It's pretty simple. So fair, a little bit on the Sphinxes. Actually, sorry, you get these Sphinxes with the expansion. A little bit on the Sphinxes. Sphinxes are actually counted as every monument, except for when you do uh, check for monument control. They actually count individually. So the one with the most Sphinxes would win that. but for every other instance, they're actually every other type of monument, which is really, really nice. And something that you probably want to 
seek after so it'll help with your onk powers and for your god that you unlock too because it'll count as an obelisk or it'll count as a pyramid and so on and so forth so how you're actually going to do things is when you pick the different actions that you can take on the board such as like movement you also get to move your your priest and this doesn't count against the movements that you have for the main board so you'll be able to move one of them once adjacent space so i can move them here here and the goal here is you're just trying to get majority in areas but we'll go over that in a second the other one is summon figures if you summon figures you get an additional summon for the priest so that doesn't count against your summons for the main game you just get an additional one and you can put that one anywhere you want on this board the next thing that happens when you get hit a control monument event at the end of the event resolve each occupied room in the palace so you're going to take a look at each of these rooms and whoever has the majority in this room will get to fire off the ability of one of the rooms now if there's a tie the player with the lowest devotion breaks the tie so someone's always going to remove win and someone's always going to have figures removed the people that don't win leave their uh, priests there now there's four different rooms that you can get so the first one you have is the chamber of law you can take one political card, actually, I keep calling these pharaoh cards or political cards. So you can take one of them from the array or the top of the deck. And after you've completed this, you flip over the next. And we'll go over what those political cards do in a second. Or you can remove, or you can remove one of your used or unused political cards from the game to make each opponent lose one devotion. Now that is super mean. Uh, especially when you get close to those cutoffs where they have to be above that level to stay in the game. And this can be very devastating because getting one devotion is, is not easy. In this game, it takes a lot of work. So two, uh, number two, the war room. You may replace one of your monuments with a sphinx. And again, sphinx count as all types, which is really nice. Uh, or and gain the Sphinx Riddle bonus. So in this case, you would be able to reveal the top cards of the political deck for equal to the number of Sphinxes you have, and then select one and keep it. Throne room, throne room, you can take a political card and move the Pharaoh up to three spaces. So you can move it away from that region to a different region to gain its benefits, which is really nice. And finally, the Court of Civil Affairs, you can take one political card and you gain two followers. Now, why would you like want political cards? Well, political cards go into your hand and you can play them and they do all different things. So this one right here, uh, right, uh, righteous worship, you can forfeit one of your actions, still move the marker to build and control the temple, pyramid or obelisk anywhere in your God's region for free. Now, when you play these guys, they go face up in front of you. And you will not be able to gain them back at all until you cycle the rest of your cards. So until you actually get your normal combat cards back, these cards once played are down. Once you get the combat cards back, then you're good. And the rules for the political cards is you can play them once per action. A player can play one political card before or after resolving their action. Again, you can't reclaim these cards at all until the battle cards are reclaimed and then they, get, they go back into your hand. Now, another side note with these political cards is when gods merge. The lesser god loses their political cards and their priests. So... Keep that in mind for merging, but that's pretty much it. That's what you're going to get with this game. It's not going to be too crazy. There's a little extra play in here. It does add a little bit more time to the game because you're going to be thinking about controlling these different areas. It's nice that they get wiped out during the monument phase, so it keeps it pretty clean. And sometimes just getting one person in like this is enough 
to be able to claim that. The political cards, some of them are pretty crazy. So they are definitely make this area worth fighting over. But basically that is going to be the gist of what this expansion adds. So let's go ahead back up to the table here and I'll give you my final thoughts on it. So that's basically how you're going to incorporate this expansion into the game of Ankh Gods of Egypt. I love Ankh Gods of Egypt. And this Pharaoh expansion, uh, I don't know. So here are my reservations for the game. It's not going to be component quality. Component quality is amazing in this expansion. The miniatures are, I think, Simon's best miniatures ever. The all gods of Egypt miniatures are just insane. It's that it just adds a bunch of fiddly stuff to a very well defined game. So on gods of Egypt is a fluid, easy to teach game. It goes through very quickly. It's very easy to understand what you need to do throughout the game. There's set things that you understand, like the battles, you understand that the cards that are available and stuff like that. So there's a purity to the base game of Ankh Gods of Egypt. This sort of just takes a monkey wrench and just like blows it up. Because what you're going to have now is you're going to have a board off to the side. And this board off to the side is going to monkey with the game. It's going to give advantages and disadvantages uh, on depending on like who has majority like we said in the in the different areas of the pharaoh's rooms and it also will add cards that you could use throughout the game and they sort of go in your hand like in conjunction with combat cards and they can or cannot be combat cards depending on what you got they add different bonuses throughout the game but really what it does is it creates a distraction so from the main game you're now going to have to also have to pay attention to this board that honestly is just it's just you're paying attention because you have to sort of thing a lot of times or at least that's how i feel like you're paying attention to this because you have to make sure that your opponent doesn't get advantage x or advantage y and so on and so forth so in that aspect, I think that it doesn't add too much to the uh, Ankh Gods of Egypt board game. I know a lot of people probably will disagree with that, but it was just like, it gave me the same feel that the Gods um, expansion did for Blood Rage. It's just like, eh, I, I barely ever play with that expansion either. I will probably barely ever play with this expansion too. It just doesn't seem like... It just feels like it's an expansion for an expansion's sake. I love the concept of the Pharaoh. I love Eric Lang's games. They're awesome. This just one just doesn't doesn't work for me. It may work for you. So that would be where my recommendation comes in. If you're playing Ankh Gods of Egypt and you think, wow, this needs just a little more. A little more to the game then this may be the expansion for you. This does add more to the game, wherein just more things that you can do. So this will add in, like I said, your Vi for the Pharaoh's favor. You will be able to pick up those Pharaoh's favor cards. I forget what they're called. Those, those cards, and you can use them throughout the game. You get really cool bonuses and stuff, and it becomes a new focal point throughout the game. So... And that's my thought on Ankh Gods of Egypt, Pharaohs. Thank you for watching.